Okay, welcome to another set of six questions, revision, multiple choice questions on key topics. All past exam questions, a great chance this time to test your understanding of the balance of payments. For each of these questions, when you're ready, just press that pause button on the video, have a go at the question, and then press play. We'll walk through the answers and the explanations together. Here's our first question. What is most likely to lead to a persistent surplus in a country's current account of its balance of payments? Have a go, please, uh, at question number one. So of those four, A, B, C and D, what's the most likely cause of a persistent surplus in the current account? Countries like Germany, China, South Korea have persistent surpluses. And the answer to question one is B, an undervalued exchange rate. An undervalued exchange rate, keeping the, the value of your currency low relative to other countries, helps to keep a country's export sectors price competitive, especially in overseas markets. High savings tends to lead to a fall in imports and a trade surplus. Protectionist policies by other countries could worsen your trade position. And oftentimes, uh, current account surpluses are driven by very high investment income earned by, from overseas assets. So the answer to question one is B. Question number two, in 2014, Australia and China negotiated a, a trade agreement and, and that trade agreement removed Chinese tariffs on 95% of Australian exports in exchange for Chinese investors having greater access to the Australian economy. Now, how would the agreement be expected to affect the Australian balance of payments in the short run? There are your four options. A, B, C and D. Press the pause button, please, and have a go at question number two. So this was a trade deal that lowered tariffs or removed Chinese tariffs on Australian goods. You therefore expect uh, the Australian current account to improve as exports improve. The correct answer here, by the way, is, is A. So the tariff reduction will increase, hopefully, Chinese demand for Australian exports. And that, of course, is an inflow of export revenue on the current account. So it has to be a, a, a greater inflow. It has to be A or B. Uh, Chinese investors will now have increased access to the Australian economy and the likely effect of that it would see a net inflow of FDI into Australia from China which is an inflow of credit item for Australia on their financial account. So that is uh, the answer A. Our third question, which policy is not likely to help reduce a deficit on the current account of a country's balance of payments? So here we're looking for the odd one out. Three of these would likely reduce the deficit. Uh, which one of the following would not help reduce the deficit on the current account? And the odd one out in this question is B, an increase in the quota. A quota, of course, is a limit on the volume or the quantity of imports allowed into a country. And an increase or a higher quota means that there's going to be an increased volume or supply of cheaper imports allowed into a country, which is likely to worsen or improve, sorry, increase the deficit on the current account. Question four, interesting question. The country's current account on the balance of payments is in surplus. It's in surplus. The exchange rate is revalued by the government. Assuming the Marshall Learning Condition holds, which diagram shows the impact on the current account balance? A, B, C or D? Have a go, please, at question number four. Now, this is a, a reversal of the usual question, which is to do with devaluation and the trade balance and something called the J-curve effect. The correct answer here is A. Appreciation of the exchange rate initially improves the trade surplus, particularly if the elasticities of demand for imports and exports are low. Uh, but if the Marshall learner condition holds, for some of the elasticities are greater than one, then over time the size of the trade surplus will decline. So the answer becomes A. Can't be C or D, because we're told initially the current account is in surplus, not deficit. So you kind of get an, an N curve here as opposed to a J curve effect. Two more questions. This is a calculation question. The table on the right hand side there uh, gives figures from the current account of the balance of payments for New Zealand in 2018. 
Now there are two blank spaces, X and Y, in the account, and four students were asked to fill in the spaces. Which student, A, B, C or D, was correct in their calculations? Have a go please, press the pause button, do the numbers. Have a go please at question five. So for our penultimate question, uh, X of course is a balance of trading goods, well we have to, it's X minus M, which comes to minus 2700, so the answer must be C or D. The correct answer is C, the trade balance is minus 2700, uh, the trade balance plus the primary and secondary income balance is minus 13700, that's an 11000 deficit there. But we're told the final current account balance is, is minus 8,500. So therefore the balance of trading services must be in surplus and that will be plus 5,200. So the answer is C. And here's our final question on this little set of past paper questions on the balance of payments. What is an expenditure switching policy designed or with the aim of reducing a country's balance of payments deficit, presumably on the current account. And the answer is to question six is C, an increase in import tariffs. Expenditure switching policies are any policies designed to increase the relative price of imports and or reduce the relative price of a country's exports of goods and services. Tariffs, of course, make imports more expensive and should, in theory, lead to a fall in demand for imports. All of the others, higher budget surplus, high direct taxes and increasing interest rates, all of those are expenditure reducing policies designed, for example, to, to bring down the trade deficit. So the correct answer to question six is C. Well, there we go. Six questions on the balance of payments. How did you get on? The wall past paper questions. If you got six out of six, you are absolutely smashing this topic and you're in great shape for exams and other assignments and assessments. OK, more topics coming up. Uh, on this series of uh, past multiple choice papers. So stay curious, stay safe, and hopefully see you all sometime soon.